What's up, everybody? Welcome to System Crafters. I'm David Wilson, and today I'm going to show you how you can install the GNU Geeks Package Manager on your existing Linux system so that you can start learning the basics of how to use it. Uh, so in the GNU Geeks manual, this is called installing Geeks on a foreign distribution. So basically a Linux distribution that is not GNU Geeks itself. So if you install GNU Geeks as your full Linux distro, uh, you don't have to do this process because it's already set up. But if you want to use GNU Geeks somewhere else, like Ubuntu, Debian, uh, Fedora, Arch Linux, etc., then this is the process you would need to follow. So even if you don't intend to install Geeks as a full system dis distribution in the future, it can still be very useful as an alternative package manager and a development environment, or basically a development environment tool. So if you remember what we talked about in the uh, previous video in this series, uh, it basically showed you all the ways that GNU Geeks can be used. And many of those ways can actually be used with this I guess way of installing GNU Geeks as a package manager on your existing Linux system. So a lot of what I said there is going to apply to doing this. Uh, however, if you don't want to try Geeks as a system distribution in the future, uh, or if you do want to try Geeks as a system distribution in the future, uh, one benefit of installing the package manager on your existing GNU Linux distribution is that you'll be able to build a custom installation image uh, with that Geeks package manager that you installed. And this is really important if you have a, a computer that has uh, devices that are not covered by the Linux Libre kernel, like maybe you have Intel Wi-Fi or um, some other type of device that um, doesn't have uh, open source or, or free, license, free software licensed drivers or firmwares included, um, it, you'll need to build a custom installation image. So having the GNU Geeks package manager installed on your system will make that much easier because you'll be able to build one that's specific for your machine. So uh, the GNU Geeks package manager can be installed on a variety of distributions. Um, <clears throat> the, the most important thing to note is which init system, <clears throat> excuse me, which init system that your distribution uses. So uh, the most common one that you see these days is system D, love it or hate it. It's probably the most common. Uh, that's on Ubuntu, Debian, Arch, Fedora, OpenSUSE, uh, most of these distributions that you see today. Uh, there's also OpenRC, which you see on uh, Gen2, Alpine, Parabola, uh, Parabola, and Artix. Uh, then there's SysVinit, which is not very commonly used, but maybe used in some uh, distributions. And there's also Upstart, which I think was the one that Ubuntu used previously. I don't know if, if any other distributions use it, but it, it may be one that you have around. So the installation script for installing the, the GNU Geeks package manager on your distribu distribution will take into account all these possible init systems. But if it doesn't find one of those, it actually, you'll have to set up the, the GNU Geeks uh, daemon yourself because it is required as part of the process of installing packages. You have to have this uh, system level daemon that's running that can take care of the uh, compilation and building of all your derivations that you install. Um, and mainly because all of these things are being installed into the, the root path of the file system, slash GNU slash store. Um, so this is sort of a, a thing that's necessary for GNU geeks, just to keep in mind. You're going to have to have a system level daemon running. Uh, people say that there are other ways to install geeks, so you don't have to have it running as a system daemon. But there's no documentation in the main GNU geeks docs for that. So um, I would call that an unsupported or a non mainline scenario. So I would try to follow this approach. Uh, if you want to use the GNU geeks package manager. All right, so uh, let's get started trying to install the GNU geeks package manager. Uh, what we're going to do is use a Ubuntu 2004 VM on my machine to show this process from start to finish. And um, we're going to follow the instructions basically as they're written in the uh, GNU Geeks manual, the, the binary installation section of the manual, which I have a link to here in the show notes. Uh, if you follow that, you'll basically get the same instructions and we'll, we'll accomplish the same thing. All right, so what we're going to do, uh, I'm going to copy up over this little section of uh, uh, commands, I guess. Maybe I'll just copy this, this one right here, this is the wget command. And we'll jump over to our virtual machine. And then uh, in this terminal, I'm going to go to the slash temp folder because we're just going to install this or download the script temp temporarily. I will paste in 
the uh, wget command, which downloads this geeksinstall.sh script. So if you look into your, your temp folder now, you'll see that there is a geeksinstall.sh script there. We're going to use uh, change mod or change mode or whatever you call this command, chmod, uh, to make this executable. So we're going to run that with the plus x parameter to make that script executable. And now we can run geeksinstall.sh. And then it tells me immediately it must be run as root because we actually do need to do some system level setup on this. So I'm going to run sudo uh, geeks install sh type in my password. And now we're going to get this nice uh, ASCII banner, which basically says that uh, this script installs GNU geeks on your system. Uh, I'm going to press return to continue. And immediately we get an error basically saying that we're missing a public key for verifying the binary download that we're going to do here for GNU geeks. Uh, so basically all you have to do is just run this command so you have to have wget installed you can use curl for this also if you have curl uh, and you also need the gpg command installed because what this does is downloads this public key and then installs it into your gpg key ring so that it can be used for verifying the uh, binaries that are being downloaded by the installation script so i'll run this now and then it creates my public key ring and uh, then i'll try to run the installation script one more time so I'll press return to continue. And now it will start proceeding and basically downloading this binary for GNU geeks. It'll take just a moment for it to get all the binary there. And in the meantime, I'll take a sip of tea. <clears throat> so one thing it's going to ask you after it finishes downloading is uh, whether you want to try and install uh, binary packages that are built from the GNU geeks build server. Uh, and uh, one, one thing you can see here in the meantime is it's actually creating a bunch of user accounts on your system. And that's because it's going to run multiple instances of this geeks builder daemon, basically, uh, with these different users to do parallel builds of things that are being installed on your system. And it also installs, uh, at least in my case, since this is a, a system D based system, uh, it installs the geeks daemon service that can be run in the background to to host all of these build daemons. All right, so now here's a question that I told you was going to get asked. Uh, permit downloading pre-built package binaries from the project's build farm. Now, in general, you should say yes to this. However, one of the aspects of GNU Geeks that you might like if you are the type of person who wants to compile all of your software is that you can make it so that Geeks will compile all of the applications that you install from source, sort of like how you do with uh, Gentoo. Now, uh, it doesn't have as much customiz customization as Gen2 does, like with the use flags and everything, but it does allow you to build everything for your machine. Uh, the reason why this is the case is that um, one of the principles of Geeks is that your system should be reproducible. So uh, based on um, the state of the system at a particular point in time, you should be able to rebuild all the software to get the same system configuration as it was on some other machine, basically. So um, if you want to make sure that you're the one who built all the binaries and there's no like untrusted things being added into those binaries or maybe no malicious code being added into those binaries, then you can say no to this question and then everything will be built from scratch. However, I'm going to say yes because building things from scratch takes a long time. So let's just make use of those existing binaries and uh, we'll say yes here and press enter. Okay, so now Geeks is actually installed on the system, uh, and that was pretty easy. However, there's a little bit more setup we have to do, so let me jump back to my notes really quickly. Um, I think that that's everything there. We did the wget for the GPG key, and we said yes to the question about packages from source. Okay, so we've got GNU Geeks installed. The first thing we might want to do is try to install a package. So what I'm going to do is try to install Emacs using the Geeks that we just installed. So in this prompt, First, what I'm going to do is, is show you that I do have Emacs installed already and what version is installed. So I'm going to type Emacs dash dash version. It tells me this is Emacs 26.3. That's what's in the Ubuntu package repo at the, at the time of recording this. And also, if we use the which command on Emacs, we'll see that this is user bin Emacs. So we're just showing this to contrast what happens after we install it using Geeks. So now I'm going to use Geeks install Emacs. And this basically is just a simple command for installing packages into your current profile. And you can also see that uh, Geeks apparently has Emacs 27.1. So it's newer than the one that we already have in Ubuntu. So this can be a benefit of using Geeks as your package manager, uh, where you can get newer versions of software than what your distribution may already have. So what's going to happen right now is it's going to install a lot of dependencies that are needed for Emacs. And the reason why it installs so many is because when you set up Geeks from scratch, 
uh, it's going to be a blank slate, basically. You're not going to have a whole bunch of programs already installed or libraries already installed. You're going to have to s install things basically from whatever programs you want to use. But this, this is kind of great because it means that the only things that get installed from Geeks are things that are relative to the things that you want to be installed. So you have total control over what gets installed. Um, the other thing to note here is that there's this error that keeps showing up or a warning basically, basically saying this uh, warning, set locale, LC all, cannot change locale. This is a common thing that people see whenever they first install Geeks on a foreign distribution. Uh, I'm going to show you how to fix that a little bit later. And let's see, is there anything else I wanted to mention about this? Uh, oh yeah, and you can also notice that we are uh, downloading substitutes here. So you see all these downloads that are happening at the moment. This is where uh, we're downloading the binary, comp the already compiled binaries for these packages from the build farm for uh, GNU Geek. So we'll see a whole bunch of packages that are being downloaded and nothing here is being compiled from scratch at the moment because uh, all of these binaries already exist on the GNU Geek's build farm. Okay, so this is going to take a little bit longer. And in this video, I'm going to have to make some cuts here and there to kind of skip ahead in time because uh, sometimes um, these operations will take a little bit of time. So I will skip ahead from this point to the point where uh, Emacs finishes installation and then we will continue on from there. Okay, I think this is <clears throat> finally finishing up now. Uh, so this uh, installed quite a lot of packages and uh, the reason why as i mentioned before is that you basically are initializing this geeks installation basically from scratch whenever you install uh, a larger program like emacs uh, but the other thing i mentioned is a lot of these dependencies are not being used from your existing distribution uh, geeks is installing its own builds or its own setup for all these things and this is part of what allows geeks to be run sort of independently from uh, the the host Linux distribution where you can do these sort of virtual environments where you can run a, a program in isolation from everything else that's installed in the system. Uh, so uh, Geeks has its own store of packages basically and it does not use the dependencies you've already got installed. Okay, uh, so now we've got everything finished and um, it's it's written out a whole bunch of stuff and then it's got a little hint at the end of the screen that we're going to have to to do something with in just a second. But first, Let's see if we can uh, check the Emacs version and see if it's 27.1. So I'm gonna use Emacs. Oops, let's see, that was a wrong wrong screen. Uh, Emacs dash dash uh, version. Oh, okay, so it says 26.3, but that's actually to be expected because we haven't actually set up our environment yet to um, detect or use the applications that are installed from Geeks. Uh, we'll also just check one more time which Emacs to see which path it comes from. And it's still user bin Emacs. It's the one that's been installed on this Ubuntu machine. Okay, so um, we, we see that it doesn't work. So what we need to do now is to set up our Geeks profile. There's a, a profile that's been installed, basically, which is basically when you install um, an application in Geeks or a variety of applications in Geeks, it makes a, a folder with a... Uh, basically a bash script that can initialize the environment variables for all the things that you installed so that it shows up on your path, all of the man pages load correctly, all the info documents load correctly, basically anything that needs to be loaded into your environment to use that particular profile, uh, there's a script to, that needs to be pulled in. So that's basically what this, um, this message at the end of the execution is telling us. We need to add these things to our environment. So we, we set the geeks profile uh, environment variable to our local dot geeks dash profile folder, which is what was just created by geeks. And then also we need to source that profile. Sourcing basically means that in your existing uh, bash or Z shell or whatever shell you use session, you're going to pull in whatever gets executed from inside of this script. So in this case, we're setting environment variables for that geeks profile. Uh, so one thing we can do is just copy this text and then uh, paste it inside of this terminal. And now, uh, if we can, we can basically echo the value of Geeks profile to see that it is set up correctly. And now, if we type Emacs dash dash version, we'll see that it's Emacs 27.1. And if we type which Emacs, it will tell us that it's coming from our Geeks profile slash bin slash Emacs folder. So now we've successfully installed Emacs and we made it so that we can get access to this Emacs that we've installed from within Geeks. Um, so the other thing we need to do is make sure that this profile gets loaded every time that we log into our system. Uh, to do that, you need to set up the proper profile file for your shell. So in my case, I'm using bash, or maybe this is dash on Ubuntu, but it uses the same bash profile. Uh, so you use the dot 
uh, in your home folder, the, the dot bash underscore profile file. So let's say vim slash uh, dot bash profile. Uh, for Z shell, I think it's dot Z profile, but you'll have to look up the documentation because I haven't used Z shell in quite a while. Oh, I don't have Vim installed here. So I know it's a little bit uh, ridiculous using Vim for this. Actually, I have Emacs installed, so maybe I could just use that instead. So I'm going to pop up Emacs really quickly. Hopefully this won't blow up. I think this is going to be the one um, that's already installed on the, sh on the machine. So Emacs version. Okay, it's 26.3. Yep, as expected. All right, so I'm going to run bash prof uh, edit bash profile. And then I'm going to copy these lines that I put here. Um, yeah, I think they're probably still in the copy buffer. I'll copy those. I will uh, insert them and uh, move them over a little bit and then save this file. So now what's going to happen is anytime that I log in to my machine um, or into like the, the window manager or whatever, uh, this profile setup will get run. Now, keep in mind that whenever you open a new terminal, um, that actually isn't there. If we try to echo this geeks profile, it won't show up. It's not a real variable at this point because we put this in our bash profile, not in the bash RC file. So the difference between bash profile and bash RC is that bash profile gets loaded when you log in and then bash RC gets loaded anytime you start a shell. Uh, now a lot of terminals will allow you to uh, configure a setting so that you can set up your shell. I think this is in this yeah, right here inside of the whatever, I think it's GNOME terminal. Uh, in the command setup here, we can run the command as a login shell. If I do that and start up a new terminal, it will load that bash profile file. Uh, but you don't really need to worry about that right now. Just keep working in your in initial shell that you've sourced the profile file, and then you'll be fine for all the things that we need to do for the rest of this video. And then once you log out and log back in, if you save things correctly in your bash profile, then all those things will be applied whenever you log back in again. All right, let me check my notes really quickly. Um, so we verify the Emacs now works um, and we've added our uh, profile script to the bash profile. Uh, let's take a look at the profile folder briefly just to get a sense for what's in there. And uh, to do this, I'm gonna use um, DRED because it's a little bit more um, friendly for this. So geeks profile. So the geeks profile folder is um, basically, it kind of looks like what your root file system would look like in Linux. There's an etc. folder, there's a lib folder, there's a share folder, bin, include, etc. So um, this is kind of like your own encapsulated Linux environment in a sense. If we look into the bin folder, we'll see that there is Emacs and a couple other programs related to Emacs, but that's basically it because all we've installed so far is Emacs. Uh, if we look in the etc. folder, we'll see this profile file, and this is what we were using inside of our own bash profile to set up the environment to use Geeks correctly. So if I open that up, all you'll see here is that it's exporting a few environment variables. So path is basically setting up the path to use the Geeks profile path um, for the current profile. Also setting up the Emacs load path. Since we installed Emacs, you may also install other Emacs packages using Geeks. So this would set up Emacs so that it could find them uh, in your Geeks profile. And info path here is for any info files that get installed uh, along with the program you, you installed. So Emacs has quite a few info files for the manuals, etc. So that gets added here. Other programs that you install may add other things to this profile file. So man path or a lot of other environment variables. So uh, if you want to know how your environment is being set up by geeks for a particular profile, go check out your etc slash profile file in your profile directory, and then you'll find out all the information there. Uh, let's see, is there anything else interesting to look at here? Uh, lib just has a lot of libraries. Uh, share has a lot of other extra stuff like icons, application files like emacs.desktop. Uh, so yeah, you basically have all the stuff that you need for a typical um, uh, Linux system, yeah, just sort of embedded in that folder. So let's go on to the next step. So um, after we've installed Geeks, um, you're actually not going to have the latest things that are available in Geeks because this binary installation that we did through this Geeks install script uh, basically has a snapshot of Geeks at a certain point in time. So if we want to get things to be up to date, we're going to have to to run a command to actually accomplish this. Uh, also, what you might notice is that we've installed Emacs 27.1, but actually Emacs 27.2 got released very recently, and Geeks actually does have Emacs 27.2. So this sort of proves that we are out of date in terms of what packages that Geeks provides. So we need to run the Geeks pull command to bring our system up to date so that we get the latest versions of all packages. 
this is another operation that's going to take a bit of time. So uh, let's just try to start it running. And then um, I will uh, tell you a couple things. And then maybe we'll wait until we'll, we'll talk again after the installation completes. So I'm going to run Geeks Pull. Uh, what this actually does, and you can kind of tell from this command that shows up here, the, the message line, it's updating the channel Geeks from the Git repository at gitsamana.gnu.org. Basically, this is the main Geeks uh, development repository. Um, <clears throat> whenever you run Geeks Pull, it is pulling the latest changes from this repository. So what this means is that Geeks is a rolling released uh, distribution or package manager where anytime you update your channels, uh, the, the main Geeks channel being the, the only one that gets installed by default, you're getting the latest stuff that's there. The, so if someone made a commit 30 minutes ago, you're going to get that commit and you're, whatever packages were updated or whatever commands were updated in Geeks, you're going to get those changes. So what happens in this process is it pulls the latest changes from that Git repository and then it starts to build the Geeks source code again because all of the Geeks packages and the commands and everything are all written in Guile Scheme. What it does is it pulls that code down and compiles everything, compiles Geek, the Geeks command, all the package definitions so that they're all ready to be used for future invocations of the Geeks command. And as such, this will take a while sometimes, especially this first run, because you're going to be pulling down quite a lot of updates. So there's going to be a lot of commits between the, um, the build that you've downloaded to the current status of the repo. This may be different based on when you watch this video. Maybe you've got a, a more updated version of the Geeks install script and it's got newer, uh, a newer version of the repository included with it. So it really just depends on the point in time where you try to, to do what I'm doing here. But at least for my case, I think there's like 1600 new packages or something like that or, or package updates since the, the, um, the version that got installed using the Geeks install script. So it takes a little bit of time for it to um, get everything rebuilt and back up to date. So. At this point, we're just going to wait a little while, and uh, whenever the pull process finishes, we've got some other setup that we have to do, and I'll tell you all about that after this is done. Okay, I think things are finally finishing up now. That took probably, I don't know, about 15 minutes on this machine, but only because I'm running OBS to record, and I'm running Geeks in a VM at the same time, so I think it's basically just making things run a lot slower than they normally would, so probably for you, it would be more on the order of maybe 8 to 10 minutes, depending on your configuration. Uh, so the interesting thing to note here is that we basically pulled down the latest uh, bits of the uh, Geeks code. There were like 16,000 new commits since the, the place where I installed Geeks. And um, now everything should be up to date. Now, now, when I say up to date, I mean only the sort of configuration of Geeks itself is up to date and the uh, code for the Geeks command. Uh, now, this doesn't change any of the packages that you have installed on your machine. So when you run Geeks Pull, that does not upgrade your packages automatically. You have to initiate that with a separate command, which we'll show in a little bit. But what this does is basically keep, gets your Geeks system or Geeks uh, package manager and its package definitions up to date with the latest at the Geeks repository. So uh, a very, very important thing to note here. Um, so as you, you saw before, we added a Geeks profile to our bash profile file uh, so that the environment variables get set up correctly so that we can run our applications that we install with Geeks. Now, uh, since we've installed Geeks on a foreign distribution, we have to take an extra step here after we do the first run of Geeks pull because, like I said, we're pulling down the latest code of Geeks and it's recompiling everything about Geeks, including the Geeks command itself. So to actually get access to this new Geeks command that just got compiled, we need to add yet another profile into our bash profile so that we have access to the new Geeks command also. Uh, so the output of the command uh, that we just ran, the Ge Geeks pull command we just ran, also tells us this. It says, hint, consider adding the necessary environment variables by running this little bit here. Now, the confusing thing about this is it looks very similar to the one that we saw the last time. And uh, whenever I was running through the setup for this video, I replaced the, the uh, profile invocation that they told us the last time with this new invocation. But it turns out you need both of them. So you're going to copy this bit of code and you're going to add it in addition to what we already have. Uh, so let me let me show you really quickly that Geeks has not been updated. Uh, if I run Geeks dash dash version, it says 1.2.0. That's the version that we installed when we first set up Geeks using the Geeks install script. Now, if I copy this uh, profile invocation here, 
and then I insert it into the buffer, uh, sorry, into the terminal, and it, now it's been executed. We've sourced this profile from a different path, mind you. It's uh, my home folder slash dot config slash geeks slash current. So it's a different profile path than what we saw before, which was dot geeks dash profile. So now if I type geeks dash dash version, we'll see that it's a different geeks. This actually has a commit hash because this has been, been built from Git and not from a uh, standalone binary that was compiled for a specific release of geeks. Uh, you can also use which geeks to see that it's coming from that new profile path, that dot config slash geeks slash current slash bin. So this is very important. Uh, if, if you don't do this, you're going to run uh, geeks pull and you're going to wonder why your packages aren't being upgraded. It's because you're not using the, the latest updated geeks command from that profile. So let's go and edit our uh, bash profile. Once again, I already have the file open here. So I'm just going to go in here and paste in this next set of lines. Now, I'm not sure why they want you to set Geeks profile twice. I don't know that it really matters in the end, but since they told you to, uh, since the actual documentation, if you go look at the getting started page, I think I have that linked. Um, let's see, was it here? No, it's, it's probably in the, in the next slide. Yeah, I have the, the getting started uh, link in the next slide. If you look at that page, what it will tell you is that you need to um, copy that same configuration uh sorry that next block again so you'll see here in the getting started docs it says um when you install geeks copy the dot geeks dot profile stuff to your profile and then later on after you do the first geeks poll it will tell you to also copy the geeks profile the next the new geeks profile that we just talked about so make sure to copy both of those into your bash profile or z profile whichever you use for your shell and then you'll have the latest geeks um, so that's very important because then it will allow you to use the latest uh, packages that you are getting from Geeks Pull. Uh, all right, so next we're going to talk about upgrading packages. Now we've gotten to the point where we can actually upgrade what we have installed. So what, since we installed Emacs already, it installed Emacs 27.1, we can try to run Geeks Pull yet another time and then try to actually run a package upgrade to get that new version of Emacs. So we're going to run Geeks Pull just one more time just to make sure that uh, everything is up to date. Um, you may not need to do this, but I'm going to do it anyway just uh, as a way to show you uh, that we are up to date. So I think it shouldn't take very long this time because um, our local repository, we just pulled it once, so probably we won't, we won't need to get anything new from there. It may take just a second for it to uh, decide that it's finished. Um, because it does, it still has to do a little bit of computation anytime that it does a pull just to get all the system state in the right um, configuration, basically. Or not system state so much as the package manager state. So we'll wait for just a second to see what this does. And we may have to make a little bit of cut in case it takes longer than I expect. But I think it should only be, you know, a minute or less. Okay, I think we're up to date now. Um, it doesn't tell us we got any new packages, so that's probably probably makes sense because we haven't uh, pulled anything new. Uh, one thing that I did want to point out that we don't get to see here is that um, whenever you do a Geeks pull, uh, whenever there's any new updates or any new packages to, uh, to that you might want to take a look at, it will actually give you a readout at the at the very end of the command that says uh, in this. A revision there are you know 20 new packages and there are 15 packages with updates that can be a very helpful way to sort of stay um aware of what packages are being updated and what new things are being uh, added to the geeks repository so i highly recommend taking a look at that every time you run geeks pull so that you get to see what's happening in the geeks repository uh, one other important command that you need to know about is uh, geeks pull dash dash news now Usually, it will write out a summary of what packages are added or updated, but if there are many things that have been added since your last pull, it won't show them all. So if you want to show everything, use geeks pull dash dash news after you run geeks pull and it will give you the latest news updates. Uh, I think if I run it right now, it probably won't tell me anything because, um, yeah, because there there is no really no real update since the last time that I pulled, so uh, you won't get any details there. But sometimes you'll get quite a lot of information about things that have changed since the last time that you pulled. Uh, all right, so now we can run the geeks upgrade command to upgrade all the packages that I have that we've have installed in our geeks profile. So if I run geeks upgrade, we'll see that it's going to try to upgrade Emacs from 27.1 to 27.2 because now we finally do have the um, the latest package definitions that came from the geeks repo. And as you see, it did not update that automatically. I had to type geeks upgrade before it would actually upgrade that package. 
Uh, also keep in mind that you can you can type geeks upgrade and then a specific package name if you want to upgrade only that specific package. So that's also a possibility. Um, I think that's a possibility. I, I should probably double check that before I tell you the wrong thing. Whenever this stops running, I will see if I can run Geeks Package. Uh, sorry, Geeks uh, Upgrade Emacs. So this is going to take a little while again because uh, we're getting the latest dependencies for Emacs as well as the latest binary build of Emacs. It won't take as long as the first time because we already have some of the things installed, but we will get newer versions of some of those same dependencies that we installed the last time. Um, since it's been a while since the uh, Geeks install package was produced up until now so there's a lot of things that have changed in the meantime so probably there will be a fair amount of packages packages that get updated as part of this process so uh, from this point uh, we will cut back to whenever the uh, the geeks upgrade process completes and then we'll check on that geeks upgrade emacs command to see if that also works i'm pretty sure it does but we'll we'll verify just in case okay luckily that didn't take very long this time uh, so now we have uh, Emacs 27.2 installed, and we can verify that by typing Emacs dash dash version. And now we see it's Emacs 27.2. And if we type which Emacs, we'll see that it's still in our dot geeks dash profile slash bin folder because it's part of our normal geeks profile. Uh, so that's great. We got we installed the Emacs package. We updated our geeks system profile. And then we uh, were able to upgrade that Emacs package after we pulled all the latest package definitions for Geeks. So uh, we've made a lot of progress, I think. So if you want to see a lot more commands that you can try to learn more about Geeks, definitely check out the Getting Started Guide in the manual. It will show you a few other commands that I haven't shown today. However, I will show those commands in the next video because we're going to go more in depth on the package manager uh, when we get to that. All right, so let's finally get to that error that we keep seeing about setting the locale. So um, when we were installing the Emacs package, when we were running Geeks pull, a lot of times we were seeing the set locale warning where it says it can't change the locale. So the way that you need to fix this is by installing the glibc locales package, but you need to install it in the root users uh, Geeks installation. And the reason why is because the, the root user folder is where the system level um, Geeks configuration lives. And that's where the, the Geeks build daemons are pulling everything from. So when you run Geeks pull, you're actually pulling your own local configuration of Geeks into your user folder. But there's a separate configuration in the root users folder, which gets used by the actual build system for Geeks. And the, the thing that it basically installs all your packages. So what we're going to have to do is uh, install that package. And then we're going to have to edit the uh, uh, the dot profile file of the root user to add an environment variable that will find this locale information that we just installed so that the future commands won't have this problem anymore. So let's go and install that uh, package right now. So I'll go into the terminal and then I'm going to paste this line in. Uh, so sudo geeks install glibc locales. And since I'm running it as sudo, uh, sudo, sudo, whatever you want to call it, uh, it's going to install it in the root users uh, package repository, basically, or package listing. So, or in the root users profile, Geeks profile, that's the right way to put it. So this is going to take just a second, I think. Hopefully it won't take too long. We won't have to do yet another cut. Uh, and once that gets installed, we should be able to set up the root user profile to use this correctly. Uh, while that's going on, I'm going to go and copy this little bit of text here. This is the important thing that tells Geeks where the locale information lives whenever it starts running its commands. Okay, so now I'm going to use, well, let's let's install Vim really quickly. I don't want to install it using Geeks because I don't know how long it's going to take. So we're just going to use apt to install it, unfortunately. sudo apt install Vim because apparently I've never used Vim on this machine before. Now let's see if, uh, if things actually do install faster with apt. I think they probably will because there's a lot less complicated behavior going on behind the scenes. We're building the man DB right now, which does take a while on Geeks as well. All right, so sudo vim, um, let's see, I think it's slash root uh, dot profile. I wonder if it's already there. Nope, so we're gonna create a new file. Oh, no, it's, it is there. We just can't get completions into that folder. I'm gonna paste this line in, and then we're gonna save this file and quit. So we, we put in the home folder for the root user slash dot geeks profile slash lib slash locale. And now I believe if we try to install any other package, then it should uh, not give us those errors anymore. So let's try that out. I'm gonna use uh, geeks install and 
keep in mind, I'm not using sudo here to, to use Geeks install. I'm just using regular user level Geeks install. Uh, I'm going to install the player control program since it's pretty small to install. And now, whenever we go through the installation process, we shouldn't see those same uh, locale warnings anymore. So finally, we can get rid of that annoying message that you keep seeing about locale. If it doesn't work for some reason on your machine, you probably have to restart the Geeks daemon for that. I'll show you how to do that in just a second. All right, so I think that's the end of this slide. All right, so now we're going to talk about upgrading Geeks. Now, we did upgrade Geeks for the user profile. But you sometimes need to upgrade Geeks for the system as well, or the root user profile as well, because this is where the Geeks build demons are getting their binaries from. So if you have a mismatch between your user level Geeks and the uh, system or the root user level Geeks, you might have some issues between them at some point in the future. I don't know how likely it is, but it is possible. So uh, periodically, you should definitely try to upgrade your, um, your root user profile Geeks so that everything stays in sync. This isn't necessary when you install Geeks as a system distribution. It's only necessary when you install it as a foreign uh, on a foreign distro. So just keep that in mind. You only need to do this if you're installing it on Ubuntu, Arch Linux, whatever. So uh, the only difference is we're going to run sudo dash i Geeks pull, and what that's going to do is uh, run it run Geeks pull in the context of the root user. So let me go over to the, the terminal here and run sudo dash i Geeks pull. And now what this is going to do is run the same geeks pull operation and then put all that new stuff into the root user profile folder. So it is a little bit strange to think that we're, we're doing the same operation in two folder locations. Oh, that's interesting. I've never seen that before. I wonder if we had a momentary blip in the internet. Hopefully it won't happen again. So anyway, what I was saying is that uh, you have a boy oh boy so it looks like we're gonna have some fun today i wonder if we have internet problems at the moment received early end of file here we go okay finally started the work uh luckily we didn't have to deal with any more issues on that or at least for now so what I was saying is you have a separate pull, basically a separate clone of the Geeks repository in your user folder compared to the, the root folder. So you may have a newer build of all the Geeks pack package definitions and commands in your user folder. That's kind of nice because it means that you can have a separate set of versions of things installed per user. So each user may have its own pull of the Geeks repository to have their own different different set of versions for things installed. So if you're using it like a multi-user machine, different users can have different versions of programs or libraries installed and they won't conflict with each other. So that's kind of an interesting property of Geeks. But the only way this is possible is if each user has their own pull of the Geeks repository at a different commit so they have access to different versions. Because typically the way things work in Geeks is that a package definition has a particular version and that package definition continues to be upgraded to new versions without leaving old versions behind. That's not true for every package because there are some packages that will keep around older versions if there are compatibility issues with newer versions or if it's just like the, the standard practice to have multiple versions of that particular library or application around. But in general, the version of a package you have access to uh, depends on which commit of the Git repository that you are currently using. So to put that back in context, two users may have their own pull of the Geeks repository using Geeks pull. One person may have updated theirs more recently, so they have a newer version of the Geeks repo, and the other person has an older version of the Geeks repo. Those two users can still install packages from different versions, and they don't conflict. And they also don't conflict in the main GNU store folder because every package for every version has its own unique folder. So everything is separated and clean and unique for every user across the system. So that's a kind of a very interesting property of Geeks if you have a multi-user system and you want users to have the ability to install their own packages without having to have super user permissions to, to run like sudo or anything else to use the normal system package manager. So uh, while we wait for this to complete, it may take some time because it's doing that same pull operation and same rebuild. It may take another 15 minutes. So we're going to make yet another cut in this video and jump ahead to the point where this pull operation is done. So we'll be back in just a second. 
Okay, so that didn't seem to take so long. I actually stepped away from my computer and came back and it was already finished. So uh, it, it took less time than I expected. Uh, so now you can actually see this summary screen that um, I told you about before where it tells you about new packages. So uh, since we have just pulled for the first time for the user, the root user profile, you'll see that there is 1,904 new packages and about 3,000 packages that have been upgraded. And it tells you run geeks pull dash dash news to see all the news. Now, I think what's going to happen here is that whenever I type that, uh, it won't give us all of the news, but let's let's see what happens. We're going to type Geeks Pull News, news here. And um, once it calculates all the information about the updates, it should tell us. However, in this case, it didn't. I don't know why it does that. This happened to me a couple times. But in normal circumstances, whenever you have already have a system that's been set up correctly. Oh, that's why. I need to do sudo. sudo-i Geeks Pull News. This should tell us the one for the root user. But yeah, I've seen this a couple of times where it doesn't tell you everything. Uh, and I think this usually whenever whenever I make a mistake. So now we can see this is the full summary of which packages have been updated and uh, installed. And you, as you can see, a lot of things have been updated and installed since uh, the installation that we did originally. So there's quite a lot of new things here. Uh, so now that we've updated our root user profile, the last thing we need to do to make sure that our current running system has everything up to date is to restart the Geeks Daemon service so that the Geeks Daemon itself is using the newest version of the binaries. And um, as I mentioned at the beginning of this episode, this really depends on which uh, init system that you're using inside of your uh, your Linux distribution. Uh, so if you're using system D, it would be sudo system control restart Geeks Daemon. Uh, OpenRC would be sudo RC service geeks demon restart. Uh, and then for Shepard, uh, you probably won't have a system running Shepard unless you're using GNU Geeks. I don't know if there's any other distros that use Shepard. It's great though, you should try it out. Uh, you would use sudo herd restart geeks demon. However, um, in a Geeks system, the way that you update the root profile is by using Geeks system reconfigure, and that will do this automatically for you. So you won't have to do this on Geeks uh, manually. Uh, check out the Upgrading Geeks guide in the manual for more information on all this. Uh, but I'm just going to go and run this uh, system control restart on the Geeks Daemon service just so that we know that everything is up to date. And uh, let me try to paste this in. There we go. Now the uh, system control, sorry, the Geeks Daemon service should be restarted. And I'll try, for some reason it's not letting me actually, I'm just going to type it in manually. System control status geeks demon and it was it should tell me that it's been started around 10 35 so yeah we, we restarted it just now basically okay so now our system is up to date and now we are at a state where we can use geeks for installing applications upgrading applications doing basically anything we want and it's a great basis for learning how to use the geeks package manager in the comfort of your existing system without having to go and try to re to install the entire geeks system distribution uh, that can be a very intensive process the first time you do it. So it's definitely good to try to do this um, as a learning experience, just using the Geeks Package Manager before you try to jump into that. So let's just jump back to the notes really quickly. All right, so uh, in the next video, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about using the Geeks Package Manager so that you can use it for installing and managing your day to day programs. But I'm also going to show you some of the special features of Geeks that you can't get from your distros package manager. Some of those things like um, rolling back the, the uh, programs that you've installed uh, using the generations or even using the um, uh, Geeks environment command for making a, a, a standalone environment for running a certain program, uh, various different things like that. So definitely check out the next video because what we're going to do is show things that will work for you regardless of whether you are installing Geeks on your existing Linux distribution or you're using Geeks as a full system, system distribution. So basically it's just information about the package manager as it applies to any use case of it basically. So uh, with that said, uh, I want to just thank my sponsors before we go. Uh, so these people have decided to sponsor the work that I've been doing, making videos on GNU Emacs and GNU Geeks, and I'm very thankful to them for their support. Uh, it, it makes me feel really good knowing that people care enough about what I'm doing that they're willing to contribute to my efforts in this way, so I'm very thankful. Uh, if you are interested in becoming a sponsor, definitely check out the links that I have in the description below. I'm on both GitHub Sponsors and Patreon, and there's also a link to PayPal for one-time tips. 
And if nothing else, if you enjoy the content that I'm making, please click the like button and share the videos with your friends or people that you know who might be interested in GNU Geeks or GNU Emacs because uh, it's great to have more people who we can talk about all this fun stuff with. All right, so until next time, thanks so much for watching this video. Please leave a note in the comments if you have any questions or comments about using Geeks. And until then, happy hacking. Thanks a lot. See you next time.